Now she stood away from me, and he moved to the fair. And I fondly did watch him go here and go there, as he made his way homeward with one star away, as a swan in the evening moves over the Right, okay, we're approaching uh, Reddins uh, and we'll let you know if we see anything crazy over. This is Newbury, an hour and a half outside this London. Now the people were saying that no two were away. High up in tree houses, anti roads protesters wait to hear which tree camps the police will go to today. They've been here throughout one of the coldest winters on record, trying to stop ancient woodland being cut down to make way for a new road. Here at a camp called Reading's Copse stands the tallest tree along the route of the proposed Newbury Bypass. Jerry is a lookout on the ground. He and his family watch for signs of early movement from an army of private security guards. Hi. With over 30 tree camps along the nine and a half mile route, it's difficult to know which trees will be targeted today. A convoy of diggers is spotted. It's time to move. Convoy! Ready! Convoy! Basically, there's people uh, monitoring the route. They're, they're driving around in their own vehicles, uh, following the, the security as they leave, and sort of just by process of elimination, see which, which sort of, uh, which road they take and we can narrow it down to two or three camps. The tallest tree is a majestic Corsican pine. The police haven't appeared at Reading's Pots today, so Manic is fixing some holes in the treehouse. It is quite quite good fun as well. You know, it's sort of a bit of a, uh, an experience. It's like being in the in the Boy Scouts or something. <laughs> but uh, no, it's uh, yeah, definitely take it very seriously because uh, there's there's quite a lot at stake here. Jerry, the lookout from the car, leaves Sun Ben on the ground to join today's evictions. Hat and I think I'm important. Do what I tell you, or I'll give you the sack. For over three months, road protesters have fought each day with a thousand security guards, police, and professional climbers in England's biggest anti road protest ever. Trees are falling while protesters are calling for mercy. Chainsaws gleaming while trees are screaming for mercy. What are we doing here? What are we doing here? Need a job to feed my children. Pay the mortgage, pay the bills. The 101 million pound bypass will cut two minutes off the time it takes to drive through Newbury during rush hour. What are we doing here? All day long I stand in the smoke. I, I can feel I'm starting to choke. And four pounds an hour, it's a fucking joke. And what are we doing here? What A tree being evicted, and there's a climber coming up who's just down there. Hello, it's fairly cozy in there. Is there anyone home? It's a couple actually. What is he going to do next? I wonder. <laughs> Why are you doing up a tree then? For money, <laughs> to climb for the money. Yeah, climb. that's worthwhile. Well, that's it, I'm afraid. But you don't need money, do you? <laughs> 
I shouldn't have to, should I? No. But I'm conditioned. We haven't got any money. We're, we're quite I know, good. yeah. <laughs> well, the climber's friend is just underneath him now, so there's two climbers outside the treehouse. Oh, hello, Sky. Hello, people in the top of the tree. We've got to go home, then? <laughs> They've pulled everything down, but now they're going home. Um, it's just said, leave them. Yeah. We're leaving, just trashing the treehouse and leaving, and leaving. Did you come and do it all again tomorrow? Work stops each day at five o'clock. You just finished work. I don't believe you. No, they've gone. They've gone home. Later on at Reading's Cops, Martin, a Newbury local, fills the others in on the day's events. They've actually hit, they've hit, hit um, uh, Mary it? um, it's Mary Go Town, Snailsmore, yeah. like, the whole caboodle around that area. But there's a saying about if you get underneath the, the like that to underneath the branch and D-lock your neck, neck, they cannot cut the branch, or they can't cut, say, straight into the D-lock because you're full. Big and did you know sword. King Arthur now? Yeah. It got, you know he got arrested with his sword. Yeah. They took the sword off him, but then they realised that he's got he's allowed to have that sword because yeah. mm. it's part of his yeah. religion. They gave it back to him, and do you know what they've done him for? Offensive weapon, and they took his pocket knife off him. <laughs> <laughs> they did. They've given him they back did. a broadsword. They give him back a broadsword. We're not organised, you know. We're just we have no leaders and no hierarchy. You know, we're just doing it for love, you know. And we, yeah, we really there's a bond of love between everyone. That's the thing about this whole, you know, this campaign, this whole lifestyle is, you know, there's a real feeling of respect. And there's respect for people you don't even know. You just bump into them, but, you know, there's a feeling of respect there. And that's what, uh, that's why we're strong. This is Reading Carps, and um, this is like more or less in the middle of the route. Uh, there's probably about 30 camps all over the place. Do you know that orange tape? I yeah. need it just to borrow it. As you can see, it's got the tallest tree en route, which is right next to the tree that I live in. It took, what, five days to build this. The, the floor went down in, in about two days. And then the walls, and then the, uh, the the then the poles here, and the and the tops over the top. Give me some slack, Stefan. I used to work as a, a builder, and so I know a little bit about sort of uh, yeah. structural support, the rest of it. But it's just there's no uh, straight lines on a tree. You know, trying to find a level place between two branches all the way around the tree is uh, is quite difficult. It's not quite level. Uh, it's sloping slightly towards that, that direction, but uh, I'm, I'm only pointing that out because I'm a bit of a perfectionist. <laughs> Going up trees like that, don't don't even try it, right? Always, always it takes two minutes, right? To just tidy your knots up, yeah. Push it on, thing. <laughs> always before you climb, just pull down your knots, yeah, so you know your knots are going to slide. Martin is an ex-squaddy who served in Bosnia and learnt to climb in the army. He teaches other protesters and the children of amenable locals how to hoist themselves up the pine. And aerial walkways allow them to travel from tree to tree without touching the ground. We use these walkways uh, to get from tree to tree. Always think of like, our safety first. We connect ourselves onto the top by using the cow's tails. That's what I normally use uh, for, uh, for climbing around on the ropes and everything. You normally attach yourself on with a clip like this, so that if you do fall, uh, you only fall a couple of feet. The professional climbers, the tactics they use is to, to take this, they, they, you know, that you're clipped onto, clip it onto their own harnesses so that you can't actually get away from them. And then they'll uh, strap a sling around you and, and drop you to the ground. 
So if you're not wearing this, it obviously makes it much harder, but it also makes it more dangerous for me. Protesters have come from all over the country, many from other long-term road protests. Martin, though, lives just a mile away. Burn through it, it's still it, like that one. Yeah, I've done that one up the tree earlier, and I left that one like that. And it has framed, and I've been up the tree what, twice, and it is frayed. That is no good. Um, another thing, if they're communal harnesses, keep them on site. Don't go off with them, because if we do have visitors, it is nice for like, the locals uh, especially to come up and climb with us. Recently, I've been spending more time in the tree than, than uh, sort of the last few, few weeks, because we've been on sort of uh, pretty much constant alert. Uh, they, even if they don't come in in the morning, they could still come in sort of, uh, you know, midday, lunchtime-ish. Um, so, it's, you know, it's best to be in the trees. And staying in the trees means having to climb up to this, a toilet bucket 30 feet higher than the main tree house. Its contents are stored in bottles around the tree, a noxious projectile to be thrown later on police climbers. I've got a little pink teapot and are we in that? Except some people don't realise that that's what it's for and end up <laughs> using it for um, making tea. There's been local people fighting this for years. You know, through, through paperwork and offices and courts and all that and um, it's still been ignored, so now we're just sort of saying, look, we haven't gone away and we still do disagree. You never know how long you're going to be able to live here. We've had eviction alerts more or less a whole five months. We've not been sure whether we'll be here tomorrow. I'm just going to go down to the ground because uh, we've heard over the CB that they've hit another camp at the north end of the route. You know, because if we can get hold of you, it's like the actions did start at 4.25 this morning, you know, instead of what, coming up to 7 o'clock. Well, I wasn't up then. <coughs> I'm up now. Uh, it's the best way to wake up in the morning. <laughs> Ken, it's not very far from here, so... If they draw a blanket, can it? They may just pull out and pull up here straight away. In which case, somebody's going to have to pull the rope up. While Manic waits on standby in the pine, some of the other protesters head off to the day's eviction, like Matt, who sleeps in a different tree camp every night. In the end, they got a bit suspicious and let the air horn off to warn everyone else in the camp. And the police just came out of nowhere, uh, dozens of them. Um, they pretty quickly surrounded the camp. And they went around slashing various ropes and quickly got reinforcements in and they've cordoned it off. The security guards have got no legal powers whatsoever. Um, the only power they've got is, is as they're employed by the contractor, they can um, use reasonable force to get someone to leave the contractor's land, which is what they've been doing. Now, they have a job to do, as I have a job to do. My job is to referee and make sure that both sides... Yeah, are right. At the moment, paid madam, by. at the oh, moment, you're, you're I'm paid by you, and at the moment, you're out. So why don't you work for me, then? Why don't you find out I'm who firebombed my I'm car? To why don't you find out who burgled my house, who ripped the ceiling off Listen, my house? There's no need to, to start punching people, no though, is there? No need to start punching people. So what do they do when you're not here? Give us 
us a clue, officer. They punch us, they kick us, they push us down the they... bank. Please don't have a go at me, because I'm on your side. I'm here to... Ah! I am here ah! to make sure that you can peacefully protest. Oh, you're on your side, bollocks! The security guards are told not even to speak to the protesters. And they've got to make sure they do the job properly, because people that, you know, if they see that people aren't really trying to keep the protesters out or they seem to be, you know, slacking a little bit, then they, they sort of like, you know, they want you to keep up, you know, keep on your toes. And that goes for the white hats, who are the regular security guards, the red hats, who are the foremen, the yellow hats, who are the security company bosses, and the green hats, who are the local detective agency trying to put names to faces. Why did nature consider that we had a niche? What, what is that? Are we fulfilling that niche? Are we behaving more like a, an org organic growing cell, or are we behaving like a cancer? We pray for your safety. We pray for a better life for all of you, and that's why we're here. We have no grudges against you. <laughs> in an effort to make, to intimidate me. I mean, they don't know, you know, what taking 20,000 mature trees out is going to do to the atmosphere. Like one in four kids in London have got asthma, which is totally unacceptable. Actually, this is my tape, I'm borrowing it, so... Would you borrow it off? Well, well, well I found it. Oh, right. So where did you find it? You can't make that again, you know what I mean? You can make that tin of tuna again, well, a tin at least, or you can make that Swiss Army knife again, you know what I mean? You can trash as many of them as you want, but you can't make these trees again. You can't make this environment again. And it's not going to be enough, you know, enough to say to people, oh, we told you so, you know, when, you know, you can't breathe. You can, you can clip it onto there if you want it to not get in your way. No, Unless you want to clip it onto there. I'll clip it onto there, I suppose. You clip it onto there like that. Yeah. Right in there and back. We're in. Thank you very much. If you took a five-year-old, it would have quite a different consciousness than us anyway, because it would have been born in more, so much more recently. It would really be more up to date on, you know, the state of things. And I think the kids that age are really born with a with greater environmental awareness than we were. Do you know how to climb? Yes. Your daddy taught you. How to climb trees. That's very brave of you, isn't it? What's very brave of who? That's very brave of you to climb the tree. Well, if I've got I've got all the safety clips. And I've got the things to stay up with, so it's easy to climb up here. <laughs> you know, kids might be playing tree people and security men as they're playing cowboys and Indians now. You know, and you know they'll all want to be tree people as well, because it's definitely the goodies. Right, mother, come here. These are press hooks. You know how to press hook. Oh, I know this. Go on. Put your feet in there. And how yes, long ago did you learn how to press a puff? Uh, last week. Oh, God. Are you scared? Not loud. We have done things in this campaign that we, have, we wouldn't have dreamed of doing. I've had so many people in my house uh, of an average of about 11 of a night time. They're having bars, they're eating, they're driving me mad, but I love them all. <laughs> I couldn't afford my mother a Mother's Day present, so climbing this is the best thing I could give to my mother. You know, it's, like, it's like for me to climb it every day and think, oh, God, you know, another tree to climb. But 
from the mother, it's like something else. Well, he loves himself, you know. If he gets caught by the English police, then he'll get caught by children as well, so... I'd just say to them, you know, why is it that I can go away and fight other people's battles uh, abroad, like Bosnia, um, places like that, you know, because the government say, right, you, you know, your regiment go, all right, fair enough, the regiment go, it pays me, but why can't I fight, it's like right on my doorstep, why can't I fight for this? The contractors have built a shingle road to the pine at Reading's Copse. The road has been built to get in a huge crane or cherry picker. It's been especially imported just for the tall pine. Hello. The testers are making lock-ons in the road, cementing metal rods into it to handcuff or de-lock themselves. They use bicycle locks and sit in the path of the crane. So you're going to have to clear people off the de-locks of the trees, then off the um, uh, road as well, bring the cherry pickers up and that's when the fun starts. What you do is, um, it's, it's illegal actually, <laughs> um, what you do is you get um, six inch nails and you drive it into the tree at an angle, a 40 degree angle, away from the bark, because it's actually inside the tree, but it doesn't damage the tree at all. Uh, so when a chainsaw bloke comes in, it's cutting away and he's come across nails and everything. That runs through there and then you have a clip on your hand, put it in there, clip to the metal bar and they can't get you out. They're doing all right. Yeah. Oh, you put a water main in. Yes, yes, it's a drainage ditch, sir. Yeah, I thought it was. Yeah. It's got a bit of a drainage problem around here. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. A bigger one down in the valley. Yeah. Yeah. Especially filming your work as well. Yeah, we got filmed too. This police patrol may appear powerless to stop such criminal activity, but persistent protesters do find themselves arrested, fined, and even jailed for it. Britain's most committed anti-roads activists are closely monitored by the anti-terrorist squad. That's a far cry from the common perception of them as a bunch of hippies who can't get a job. I'm signing on and I must admit it's getting on my nerves. For unemployment benefit is not what I deserve. I want a job with a living wage where I can just be me, employed for what I do, not what others see. A freelance poet maybe, but this poem's not too hot. I thought about the army, but I don't fancy getting shot. The money markets maybe, but capital's required. Perhaps a male model, but would I be desired? So I'm seeking work most avidly, and yet I must just say, employers are not over keen when they find I'm NFA. So here I am, no home address, and also now no job. But still, I just cannot believe I'm a lazy workshop slob. <laughs> we are outlaws. We're um, fighting the sheriff. I'm we're against. No, we were against the sheriff. Yeah. Like, you think Robin Hood, what was he against? He was against the sheriff. He stole off the rich to give to the poor, right? Yeah, we're stealing the taxes according to some of the less No, we're not. Of no, the costs, government are stealing the taxes because they've never, gone, they've never gone round to Newbury people. They've never asked anybody in Newbury, would you like a bypass? How long did it take you to get through Newbury on a Friday night? Two minutes. And what's your mate doing in the car? I thought you was all against cars. Hey? Yeah, that breaker on the other side is uh, slagging uh, the old bro protesters off, yeah? Um, why, do, why do you sit at home? We're not against the road at all. We're against them cutting the trees down. Bollocks! Your mate earlier said you was against cars! Are you in a different tribe or something? This is Romeo Charlie, Romeo Charlie, one police van spotted on Enborn Street. Over. They're on M 
and born straight. She did. Security on Edborn Street! Get up the trees! Overnight, the protesters have erected tripods to lock onto. All camps in the okay, south, right. all camps in the south, Reading's cops, they've turned right, they've not gone to the chase, they're not going to Penwood, they've turned right. Reading's cops, on your toes, Pete, can you check with Reading's cops, they've received that, over. Get those ropes up! <laughs> Have you got any sign of bailiffs or climbers in your area, over? This is Romeo Charlie, negative. No sign of bailiffs, uh, bailiffs or climbers as yet, over. All we do know is that Reading's cops is surrounded, over. As droves of diggers roll in, the tree dwellers now wait to hear whether the police climbers are on their way. If not, it will mean there will be no evictions with security just there to protect the machinery working on the ground. One motorway is going to have a, a, a long-term effect on the whole planet. It's going to influence the future of life on this planet. Every small action that you do has a reaction. So think about what you're doing here. You're basically slowly causing life to die on this planet. Rock a bike, crusty on a treetop. I was born under a new breeze star. I was born under a new breeze star. Wells are made for rolling, rolling they will do. Trees are made for cutting and the bypass will go through. The Grim Reaper walks away unheard, but he speaks for many. Six and a half million British people are now members of environmental pressure groups. And increasingly, just as it is right across Europe, direct action or protest that breaks the law is becoming the way they make their message heard. Sorry? What? Bailiffs? To get the protesters out of the trees, the police have to employ professional climbers. It's a tactic which has bitterly divided the British climbing world. Police climbers arriving today will be forced to evict old friends who have joined the protesters up the pine. The environment is an intrinsic part of climbing, as simple as that. When, when, we, when we go out, we're obviously in a natural environment to climb, and it's, it's you know, it's just been the, sort of a rule. You take care of your environment, you take care of climbing. 200 quid a day they're getting, 250 pound a day. Um, to come down and to haul people out of trees who are basically protesting to protect their environment. I've known a few of these people for maybe 10 years. So I've known a long time and I'm very good, well, they were very good friends. The climbers have just arrived at Middle Oak, which stands 200 metres from the pine. The protesters know what this means. If the climbers are here, it's only a matter of time before the arrival of the tall cherry picker. Everyone now knows that the pine could fall before the end of the day. There are frenzied 11th hour fortifications, all designed to slow the climbers down. What have you been up to? We're building another walkway. Sound? I'm going up. We can, bend it. We can stand behind a barricade on the walkway and um, gently, gently discuss things with the climbers. <laughs> Meanwhile, at Middle Oak, the first police climber heads up the tree to face a barrage of hurled liquid of every description. Oh, 
We're not doing anything that's going to hurt any of them. It's unpleasant, but then <laughs> destroying the natural environment's unpleasant. I mean, I think that the throwing of urine is quite a quite a good symbol of just uh, what we think of them. Took the people out of the tripods and arrested them. They did get uh, all the road clear. Uh, we dug holes as well. They put mud into it as well to get cherry pickers in. As you see, they've got cherry pickers and their diggers in. Like our lot, all we do is just go up higher, up into the trees. Um, we have D locks, bicycle locks, and whatnot, and just got uh, D lock ourselves to the trees. And you can see them running around now. They're running from the cherry pickers, bringing the police climbers into the lower trees. In a matter of minutes, climbers and protesters come head to head. As the final trees come down around them, the protesters in the pine anxiously await their turn. Until, that is, fate deals a blow to the road builder's cause. They have chopped down a tree onto one of the police climbers, and it's also fallen onto the big cherry picker. cut a tree down to my tree and the tree house such as where they pushed it it came down onto the arm as you can see the big arm over there came down um, onto the actual um, cherry picker rolled off the cherry picker and then hit one of the air climbers so um, he's been rushed to hospital um, hopefully well hopefully he's not uh, that madly injured but it serves his right really for uh, doing a horrible job of uh, getting us out really basically oh, I see There are hoots of jubilation as the road builders turn tail and leave. It's a humiliating end to a hard day's slog, and after only 48 hours on the job, one of the police climbers has decided to quit. Well, I started on Tuesday and decided to stop work today, which is now Thursday. Basically, because the work was too stressful for what I wanted to do, I didn't like getting urine thrown at me and food and banter from the protesters. That's the, basically, I can do other work and earn less money, but which, for me, would be better. We're well, asking them to look at us and, to, and you know, to give an answer why they're actually doing that, and they wouldn't. And most of them were looking down, they wouldn't even actually, you know, hold any eye contact with them or anything. They basically were ashamed of what they were doing. The pine has earned one final reprieve, and the protesters can hardly believe their luck. They won't be back. Not tomorrow, anyway. They've got to deal with that cherry picker first, and set up another massive operation so they can fail again. This tree survived four major storms. Storms in 1880 had a major storm in this country. And there was another storm in 87 in this country, and it survived that. Your average person just sees a tree fell like it's just a dumb thing. But it's like seeing an elephant skinned or something, you know? You should be really shocked to see a tree felled. 
but it's become this like main, you know, it's just a normal thing. People feel like, oh, trees, you know, just make furniture and stuff. It's become a symbol, especially because it's now stood here on its own, everything else is gone. You know, it's, it's like the sun down there. But we're still up here. If there was public transport, they wouldn't need a bypass. If lorries had computer links so they didn't have empty trucks, they wouldn't need a bypass. If there was a tunnel, they wouldn't need a bypass. And they'd have the best of both worlds. They could, you know, you could have it all. It doesn't have to be, you know, any, losing anything. This tree will cost them more to bring down than any other tree en route. Uh, and having said that, we, you know, we are going to lose eventually. It's all about costing them and making sure that next time they plan a road scheme, we, we form a major part of the, the financial equations that they do. And then hopefully they might think about alternatives. Groups like Greenpeace and Friends of the Earth actually uh, sort of, you know, validate direct action now, whereas before they were just completely, you know, distancing themselves from any illegal activity. I mean, it's just pushing the boundaries, isn't it? It seemed like a small plan to me. It seemed like the road was, it was nothing major, you know, it was just a simple road. But now that I, as I've worked here, and I, as I've seen what's going on, it's not just the road. It's clearing all this woodland, there's going to be all these slip roads eventually, there's going to be houses and industrial estates, and it's just to, it's just to make the rich richer. By 6am a few days later, the inevitable has happened. Reading's copse is surrounded. Since the last attempt, the tree has become an embarrassment for the road builders. Now they're determined to get the protesters out of the pine. Above the treehouse, a helicopter with thermal cameras flies low overhead. It's used to count how many people are in the tree. Well, the security have turned up, they've cordon right the way round the site, uh, the remaining trees. And uh, we're waiting for them to bring the climbers and the cherry pickers in to try and start getting us out. Climbers in riot gear soon arrive. They make light work of the hastily constructed defences at the base of the pine and the protesters make last-ditch attempts to persuade the climbers not to go through with the eviction. They'll probably come and warn us now that uh, we, we are free to leave of our own accord. If we choose to stay, we'll be arrested for obstruction of the sheriff. As the first climbers board one of the four cherry pickers here today, one protester locks himself by the neck to the ladder strapped precariously to the top of the pine, 165 feet up in the air. So what are you making there? Um, they're whips to um, try and keep the chainsaw away in the branches, because if, um, if the chainsaw if some of this rope gets in the chainsaw, it just tangles it up. The protesters station themselves the entire length of the pine, but they are severely outnumbered. Each cherry picker will come for a different part of the tree. Do I belong to some ancient race? I like to walk in ancient places. These oh, yeah, things yeah, I up, can understand. I don't believe in your modern ways. Don't care about the things you say. Your policies have failed the test of time. Cause you sold us down. You sold us down the river road. Money market goes round and round. Yeah, the dollar goes up and the pound goes down. Another English forest comes down. Cause you need money for your new 
sometimes cause you get frightened when the sun goes down. Oh, won't you tell me where we are bound? Cause your soul is done. These are things that I can understand. I don't believe in your modern ways. Don't give a damn what you all say. Cause your policies have failed the test of time. Cause your soul is down. Your soul is down. More than 700 protesters have been arrested, but like every other tree along the route, the pine's fate is sealed. The most unpopular road in British history will be built, but it has cost the British taxpayer £9.6 million to police it. The security cordon is broken. A protester makes one last rush to stop the felling. a futile gesture of a growing and angry movement. But it's not enough to save the pine. Pay the mortgage, pay 